welcome back. I am Statman Dave and this is Three Talking Points. Today we're going to be dissecting Manchester United versus Liverpool in the Premier League. The game finished one all with James Milner opening up the scoring from for Liverpool from the spot following a pretty stupid decision from Paul Pogba and then Zlatan Ibrahimovic grabbed an equaliser on the 84th minute to finish the game goal apiece. Points even at Old Trafford on Sunday afternoon. Anyway, talking points today, we're going to be talking about Paul Pogba's absolute stinker. Then we're going to move on to a bit of Tony Valencia and finish off with the impact subs that changed the game for Manchester United. Anyway, let's go. First up, let's talk Paul Pogba. There's no other place to start other than the penalty he conceded. Throughout the first half especially, he just couldn't deal with Dejan Lovren and set pieces. Paul Pogba was assigned to man-mark Dejan Lovren. And it was a bit of a weird decision, considering the likes of Rowe, the likes of um, Jones, who might be better to deal with one of the Liverpool centre-halves. In the first half, Paul Pogba just couldn't deal with his movement, couldn't deal with his positioning, and it was, it was just so poor from Pogba. And when he conceded the penalty... Just terrible, terrible defending. Lost his man, recovered. And it looked like he shut his eyes and the ball hit his hand and it was a definite penalty for me. And of course, James Milner putting in the ball into the back of the net. But it was an interesting one that United didn't adjust that you know, through the first half. They didn't go, look, Paul Pogba's having a really bad time with Dejan Lovren. Maybe we move someone else out there. You know, Zlatan, for example, he usually sits on the near post and defends it, um, defends that area and clears the ball in that area like Didier Drogba did for Mourinho at Chelsea. Maybe just switching those two up. Let Paul Pogba attack the ball. Let Zlatan pick up Dejan Lovren just until half-time where they can get reorganised. It was an interesting one. Moving on, the thing that frustrated me more about Paul Pogba's performance was his inability to move the ball quickly. It was so poor. Liverpool came to Old Trafford with a very decent approach. They decided to compact the midfield and they went with a narrow midfield diamond, going with four central players against United three. And that caused United a lot of trouble, um, you know, dealing with the press from Liverpool. And that was something Paul Pogba just didn't adapt to. When players press you um, in central midfield, how you want to do in this system that they were playing versus the system United were playing, shift it wide, shift it quickly. Move that diamond from left to right consistently. Problem with Paul Pogba was every time he got the ball, it looked like he was trying to take his man on. And as soon as Liverpool saw Paul Pogba had the ball and took that extra touch, bang, they're on him. And it was a really interesting and good strategy from Jurgen Klopp. And something that potentially other Premier League managers may um, adapt given it was so effective against Paul Pogba that as soon as he got the ball, there were three or four players going for him, you know, closing that space down. Quite an interesting part of the game, the Liverpool diamond was a little bit left shifted, which opened up so much space on that right-hand side, which again was another thing that frustrated me about Paul Pogba. And his inability to switch the play, he's usually so good at switching the play, so he's usually good. Picking it up, left central midfield, bang, Antonio Valencia. Perfect pass, perfect pace. He only did that once in the entire game. Usually Paul Pogba's hitting Valencia four or five times a game and opening United up on that right-hand side. And again, going back to Liverpool's diamond, that would have been perfect because they were so conscious of Anthony Martial um, beating the young fullback that Liverpool played at right-back that as soon as the ball went onto that left-hand side, the diamond shifted over. One little switch, one little switch of play opens up Antonio Valencia and he is through. The one thing I did like about Paul Pogba today, his game, was getting forward and getting into the penalty area. Obviously, the chance that he missed another good but bad part of his game. I think that Paul Pogba, to become one of the best central midfielders ever, or the best central midfielders in world football, needs to get got, add more goals to his game from moving forward and getting ahead of the likes of Zlatan and Rivers. He did that well today. Uh, obviously, the chance that he missed, but needs to take those opportunities. A very, very poor finishing. Something that Paul Pogba needs to work on, finishing with that left foot. I've seen before for Juventus, um, when he's clean through last season, he was good on his right, but maybe that left foot is a little bit of weakness that he needs to correct. So his game by numbers was poor reading, he failed to create a chance, conceded the penalty, committed three fouls, and only completed 71% of his passes. That is pretty poor from Paul Pogba. But I think with Pogba, we've got to let him off. 23 years old, maybe he got a little bit too overexcited in this game, was trying to take the game to Liverpool a little bit too much when he should have sat back, moved the ball quicker, just done the simple things and got himself into the game. If he'd taken that chance, I feel the game would have been completely different. He would have been confident, he would have been making the right decisions, he would have been switching the play. That's something that Paul Pogba needs to adjust as a player as he matures, that if he starts bad in the game, he needs to be able to come out in that second half and do the right things. But anyway, he's a young player and he's been fantastic in the last two months, so this you know, performance like this was always going to come. But anyway, imagine if he'd scored the goal, would have been spraying the ball to the left, to the right, would have been giving it to Antonio Valencia, and United would have probably won the game three goals to nil. But anyway, football is about small margins and Paul Pogba was on the wrong side. But anyway, moving on to the player that he could have switched it to, that's Antonio Valencia. For me, United massively underutilised him in the game. The amount of space he was given on that right-hand side was huge. I already mentioned about Liverpool's diamond that was shifting right quite heavily to deal with Martial and Pogba, who usually operate in that zone. The space was huge. 
Wijnaldum wasn't tracking Antonio Valencia, and it was pretty much Antonio Valencia 1v1 against James Milner, and every single time Valencia got the ball, he had the beating of Milner. Against Liverpool, Antonio Valencia put 11 crosses into the box, and James Milner only managed to block one, but United didn't do it enough. That should have been 20 crosses in a game like this, especially given the strategy at the end of the game of getting the ball into the box as Latin Amaro and Fellaini. It was so frustrating because tactically that is how you undo a 4-4-2 diamond is you switch the play quickly, you switch it to your fullbacks and you create overloads down the flanks through quick switches of play. United could have done that but they didn't do that and it was yeah, frustrating. But Antonio Valencia took the game to Liverpool, especially in that second half, go to the goal that United scored. It came from an Antonio Valencia run from right fullback, went past Wijnaldum, won a throw-in, got the ball back from the throw-in, went to the byline, crossed the ball, Rooney, Fellaini, back to Valencia, smashed it back in the middle for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And Antonio Valencia did very well going forward as well as coming back, was always an outlet on that right-hand side getting crosses into the box. His game by numbers was fantastic, one assist, three clearances, three interceptions, Four tackles, ten crosses and a 94% pass accuracy. A brilliant display from the Ecuadorian international. But anyway, let's move on to the two players that made some big impact off the bench. On to number three, Mourinho made some pretty good substitutions once again for Manchester United. United really struggled with intensity in that first half and Mourinho made the right change at half-time and brought on a very, very hyped-up Wayne Rooney. That gave United a lot. United switched their system from the 4-3-3 they started with to a 4-2-3-1, gave them another attacker in that final third, and that was Wayne Rooney. What I liked about Wayne Rooney's performance was he brought intensity and aggression, but also calmness in that final third. You know, he kept on running in behind, he kept on trying to stretch the likes of Claver and the likes of Lovren that aren't very good when you spin them. But also in terms of pressurising winning tackles, I felt that the tackle that he put on James Milner, it was a naughty tackle, but there wasn't enough of that in the first half of Manchester United. There wasn't enough aggression and intensity. As soon as Rooney got onto the pitch, it started to come. With Ander Herrera, obviously, he had another fantastic game. You know, every week we talk about Ander Herrera, so I'm not going to touch on him right now, but it, again, one of the most tackles, made the most interceptions, a fantastic performance, again, from the Spanish international. But Rooney was aggressive, intense. What we're seeing with Wayne Rooney this season, it's not a volume of chances that he's creating, but it is in the big moments that he's getting the assists. You know, you think in recent weeks he's got some pretty key assists there. Go back to the whole City game, the composure he shows for that uh, Marcus Rashford goal when he's been pushed out to that left midfield spot. And I felt he did that for the goal, obviously bringing the ball down, brilliant first touch out of his feet, and then hung, hanging the ball up for Fellaini. What more do you want? Obviously it breaks to Valencia and Zlatan puts it away. But it's clinical, it's, it's calm, it's, it's composed, and that's what we're getting from Wayne Rooney this season. Anyway, the other player that made a massive impact on off the bench, it was Maron Fellaini, of course. Quite interesting, Mourinho went for Fellaini over Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford would have been a good option, but I kind of understand why Mourinho went for Maron and Fellaini. Liverpool were dropping deeper. There wasn't going to be that much space for Marcus Rashford to attack and get into, whereas Maron and Fellaini was that target. In the games, Latan Ivic wasn't the best target for United. In terms of his aerial duels, he only won 33% of them. So bringing on Maron and Fellaini, another target really improved United's uh, direct play that they, they switched to after about 75 minutes. And I don't have a problem with that when you, you know, you're chasing a game or you're chasing um, a lead. You, you, need to ch you need to change it up and you need to go direct sometimes. That's what Marouane Fellaini gave. You know, compared to that 33% of aerial duels that Zlatan was winning, as soon as Marouane comes on, he wins 80% of his aerial duels in the game and he starts bringing United further up the pitch. Sort of like what he did for Everton. You know, playing as this hybrid attacking midfielder target man, but it worked. It worked 100,000%. United were further up the pitch. They were holding the ball in those areas a bit better. And of course he was a target. You know, the goal only becomes because Marouane Fellaini's presence and, you know, decent header that hits the post and then obviously comes out and, and, and falls back into the goal. And that physical threat is why Morgan Schneider has gone to Everton and Marouane Fellaini signed a new deal because it gives you an option. But guys, that has been that for Statman Dave today. But anyway, don't be too sad. United are on a very, very good run of form. 16 games unbeaten in all competitions. Only four points off the top four and two points behind Manchester City. So don't worry too much about it. Mourinho's changing it for the better. Anyway, if you're new to Statman Dave, please hit that subscribe button and like the video. Anyway, till next time, guys.